Ask whether intercessory prayer, prayer had any significant effects on health. And these are all the people who did these experiments, incidentally, were almost all believers. Uh, but they were good scientists, and they went, like all scientists must, to where, whatever the data says. And the data said there's no evidence that prayer has any benefit whatsoever. In short, the absence of evidence for the efficacy of prayer is evidence for the absence of God. Now note that these two uh, examples of God's actions could have turned out otherwise and provided real evidence for God had he existed. And let me make it clear that any scientist seeing enough evidence uh, would become a believer. It all depends on what the data say, and the data so far say God does not exist. In the past, when our knowledge was deficient, it was tempting to rely on God as a stopgap to explain all that was unexplainable. That is the God of the gaps argument, as it's called. But even in the days of Newton, scientists and philosophers have been postulating a reality without God, simply because they don't find him necessary. Three, the third area where God's absence is evident is in the lack of design in nature. Now, the argument from design was once a good argument for God. No one could imagine how the enormous complexity of life could be explained naturally until Darwin and Wallace showed how complexity follows from evolution by natural selection. Since then, every field of science, from elementary particle physics, to chemistry, to biology, to neuroscience, to the social sciences, has demonstrated the natural evolution of complexity from simplicity. This conclusion has been supported by uh, developments in computer science that demonstrate how order uh, can come out of chaos. So biological life does not look as it should look if it is the result of intelligent design. It is too imperfect, too filled with useless appendages such as junk DNA. In fact, life looks just like it should look if it is the result of the unguided, cobbled together processes of evolution. In short, the absence of evidence for design in nature is evidence for the absence of God. The fourth topic is cosmology. Theology teaches that God made the universe from nothing. So no one uh, could imagine how matter in the universe, the matter of the universe, could have come from nothing without violating the laws of physics, until Einstein showed that uh, matter could come from, from energy. That's what E is equal to mc squared uh, is a solar matter. Now, uh, still no one can imagine where the energy came from until recent decades when satellite experiments showed that the average energy density of the universe exactly equals the critical density it would have if it came from an initial state of zero energy. So no energy was required to make the universe. No miracle was required. Now, no one can imagine where the order of the universe could have come from except from a higher order, until it was discovered that the universe is expanding and there's always more room for order to form. In short, the absence of evidence for a creation of the universe is evidence of the absence of God. The cosmos does not look as it should if it were the work of a flawless creator. Instead, it looks just like it should look if it came from nothing, from utter and complete chaos. In fact, since we have a good reason, good reason to believe now from cosmology that our universe did begin in complete chaos, even if it had a creator, no trace of the creator survived that initial chaos. The only possible God is a, a deist God who created the universe, induced complete randomness, and then paid it no more attention. This is the so-called God who plays dice. You can pray to him or her, or it, if you want, but it won't do much good because such a God does not act in the universe. Now, the success of natural explanations for our basic observations not only show that God is not necessary to understand life in the cosmos, they contradict the whole concept of a creator God who acts in the world. They allow us to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that God, such a God, does not exist. Let me now present the latest scientific views on the nature of the universe without God. In this, please understand that I'm not introducing any new physics of my own or anyone else's. I'm simply giving a philosophical interpretation to our current best understanding in physics and cosmology. 
Since the 1980s, reputable cosmologists have published papers in reputable scientific journals proposing scenarios by which the universe could have come about naturally. One plausible mechanism is a well-established process called quantum tunneling. Our universe could have tunneled from a prior state of complete chaos and possibly through that region of chaos from an earlier universe. In my 2006 book, The Comprehensible Cosmos, you'll find this scenario worked out completely mathematically from well-known principles of physics and cosmology. That proof is accessible to anyone who has studied undergraduate math and physics. Again, this is not my uh, personal intention, but taken from peer-reviewed literature. While we cannot prove that the universe came about in this exact manner, the fact that such a scenario can be fully formulated, consistent with all we know about physics and cosmology, shows that we are not required to introduce God or any other supernatural element to explain the existence of the universe. Now, at this point I'm often asked, what about the laws of physics? Where do they come from? Well, the laws of physics are not what most people think they are. They are not rules for the behavior of matter, handed down by God, or somehow built into the structure of the universe. The laws of physics are human inventions. They are the ingredients of mathematical models that physicists use to describe observations and measurements. Now, I'm not talking postmodernism here. Uh, the laws are not arbitrary. Uh, they're not different in every culture. They must agree with observations. But they're still our inventions. In the 20th century, physics, physicists discovered that virtually all the laws of physics follow from one simple rule. Any mathematical model you write down to describe some observation cannot depend on the point of view of the observer. The model must contain certain symmetries so that no particular observer is singled out as special. Provision is made that for these symmetries to be spontaneously, that is, accidentally broken. In 1916, mathematician Emmy Noether proved that the most important laws of physics, conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, and conservation of angular momentum, appear automatically in any model that does not depend on any special time, any special position, or any special direction. We require that our models must be the same now as they were 13 billion years ago and will be the same 13 billion years in the future. We require that they must be the same inside the nucleus of an atom here on Earth as they are 13 billion light years away in an atom in a distant galaxy. We require that they are the same in Moscow as they are in Melbourne, where the directions to find is up are different. When we extend this principle to four-dimensional space-time, we find that Einstein's special theory of relativity completely follows from just requiring no special direction in space-time. The general theory of relativity is also based on space-time symmetries. Now, early in the 20th century, physicists extended these ideas to the abstract space that they used to describe the quantum states of the system. They called this principle gauge symmetry. From gauge symmetry, they were able to derive all of the, uh, base, the basic structure of what is called, they, they were able to derive uh, the, uh, the basic ideas of electromagnetism. In fact, the whole, all the equations of electromagnetism could be calculated, could be derived from just that principle. By 1970, they had developed the basic uh, structure of what is called the standard model of particles and forces. In that model, all the matter that composes the stars and planets the visible universe is composed of just three fundamental particles, the electron and two kinds of quarks we call up and down. Since then, the standard model has successfully described all observations made at accelerators and telescopes. The standard model provides us with the basic physics of the universe back to when it was a trillionth of a second old. So we know a lot about the universe at this stage in our history. Now that the Large Hadron Collider has gone into operation in, in Geneva, we may, we may soon hear of the first violations of the standard model in four decades. At least that's what we physicists hope. Physics has been stalled by the lack of empirical anomalies to guide us uh, to up to the next level of understanding. It's really not no fun knowing everything there is to know. 
At this point, the stubborn theist might still ask, where is all this symmetry coming from? The answer is simple, it came from nothing. I equate nothing to the total chaos that we project existed just before the Big Bang. If something has no structure to define it, it is as much nothing as nothing can be. If our universe came from nothing, as the model suggests, and you try to describe that nothing in terms of space and time, you would have complete symmetry. So the symmetries of the universe are just what they should be, if they came from nothing. It follows that the laws of physics are just what they should be, if they came from nothing. And that means the laws of physics are just what they should be, if there is no God. One more final point on cosmology. I am often asked, why is there something rather than nothing? I usually retort, uh, why isn't there, uh, hey, page here. why isn't there uh, nothing uh, rather than something? Why is nothing so uh, special? Excuse me just a second. I was too busy making notes to get my, my pages in order here. As the uh, Nobel Prize winning physicist Frank Wilczek has said in, 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 answering, in trying to answer the question, why is there something rather than nothing? He says he said that nothing is unstable. In physics, the natural direction of phase transitions is from simplicity to complexity, from symmetry to less symmetry. For example, in the absence of heat, water vapor will spontaneously change into liquid water and then into solid ice. The structure of ice is more complex than that of water vapor. Consider the beauty of a snowflake, which comes directly from water vapor. The universe is like a snowflake. It's frozen nothing. Moving from physics to neuroscience, I want to explain why we can now make a convincing case against the common belief that the human mind is associated with an immaterial, immortal soul. If consciousness is <laughs> to continue after death, then how can we become unconscious by brain injury, chemicals, illness, or anesthesia, which are purely material in nature? Brain scans of incredible precision uh, now enable neuroscientists to identify patterns of neuronal firing that constitute our thoughts and emotions. Models for how the brain produces consciousness are now sufficiently developed that they are beginning to be tested in the laboratory. So nothing in the world of, of science requires us to introduce God or the supernatural to explain anything that we observe in the universe. Science has adequate models to at least plausibly, uh, to provide at least plausible natural explanations for fundamental questions such as the origin of the universe, the origin of complexity, the apparent fine tuning of the parameters of physics, uh, the production of complexity from simplicity, and the nature of consciousness. Now it is true that God could deliberately hide from us, or if he wanted to, by not making his presence known to all but a select few, like evangelical <laughs> Christians, that that would be an evil God, an immoral God, a God who dooms everyone but his favorites to everlasting torment. A good God, a moral God would not do that, he would make himself available to everybody. So the very fact that there are non-believers in the world proves that God does not exist. Summarizing, the Judeo-Christian Islamic God can be scientifically shown not to exist beyond a reasonable doubt by, by the absence of evidence that should be there. There should be evidence that he reveals truths to humans. There is none. There should be evidence that he answers prayers. There is none. There should be evidence for design in nature. There is none. There should be evidence of a miraculous creation. There is none. Thanks very much.